popular on r slash movie theater employees. Help, it's a Saturday. That's gotta be a similar fear that the morning shift employees at Jersey Mike's have when 10 a.m. mass just wrapped up at churches in their area. People will be flooding in by the thousands to eat some cold, cold roast beef sandwiches. Hi again, guys. And recently, I've been getting pretty into niche subreddits, usually about sub-communities that I have no personal stake in. One of my favorites has been local college subreddits, which are really funny to read sometimes, but most recently, I've been looking at r slash movie theater employees, a support group dedicated to the folks who make our movie-going experience possible, where they can air out their complaints. And I gotta say, it really makes you appreciate them more when you get to hear what they go through behind the scenes. A moment of silence for all those working the beginning of Mario opening weekend. And there's Mario removing his cap and respect for all the poor minimum wage high schoolers and adults whose mental health he will be directly responsible for destroying. This one's on you, Mario. Don't act like you're innocent. So today I wanted to go through some of these posts and bring awareness to the plight of movie theater employees everywhere and tell you guys to please be nice to service workers. On any given day, they are probably having a worse one than you because people the age of your parents don't understand that there is a higher brain function and someone with emotions in that Regal Studios uniform. If you enjoy this video, there will be this card at the end that takes you to another like it. And be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Only 20% of y'all are. And if you do, you'll never miss a video. And you can always undo it later. Greeter. Hi, how are you? Dad. Here's my ticket. Turns to family. I don't know who these people are. You shouldn't let them in. And when the greeter doesn't laugh, the dad has to in his place. <laughs> I don't think I could ever work in hospitality. I just don't have the stones for it. Even when I worked at a fast food place, I chose to work in the back making food and almost losing my eyesight when grease would fling into my eyes. I, there was like a little speck that landed right here. I had a scar for years and it almost landed in my eyeball. All that just so I didn't have to interact with people. Even in my current job, where the whole thing is me talking at people in an effort to get them to like me, I get to directly insult my audience and say I hate them. I don't gotta be nice and they just laugh at it like I'm making a joke and not just being straight up with them. A family of 13 showing up to the theater 45 minutes late to watch Avatar 2 and seeing that it's the front row only. How could this have happened? Listen, if they're gonna get mad about this, I feel like they're overreacting a little bit. Like, there's a lot to be gained in the front row. Sure, your neck will hurt, your movie is gonna look funny the whole time you're watching it, but some of the greatest cultural impact of film recently have been the sights from that front row. Look at this Avatar 2 screenshot. Why the fuck is he looking at me like that? The same goes for Cillian Murphy, Why the Long Face, though my favorite is for sure Freddy Fazbear, looming over you like a dude who you just gave a blowjob's nutsack. That's a very relatable anecdote, I'd know. This certainly hits home, lol. <sighs> Nothing better than movie theater popcorn. Some for me, some for the cleaning guy. Some for me, some for the cleaning guy. I think it was jokes like this growing up that single-handedly made me more conscious of my popcorn slinging habits. I used to think that you were supposed to dump the rest of your bucket of popcorn on your chair when you were done so the theater employees could have some too, slash gag. I never actually did that, that's just funny guys, right? Now, in my old age, I've learned better. I'm still not perfect, but if I see that I unwittingly spilled some popcorn, I try to pick it up and put it in the bucket before I throw it out so it's at least a little more bearable. Five Nights at Freddy's doesn't really have jump scares, so how does this even happen? If you ask me, it was probably because of every time Josh Hutcherson appeared on screen. Those whistle edits where his face magically appears in a video unrelated to him have been kicking my ass. And that a thought of his mugshot makes me pee a little. Alternatively, from the group of people who sat in that seat, one or more of them probably didn't leave the theater alive. They were puppeted by their friends hoisting them up like animatronic corpses. Very in the spirit of the movie. There's many such cases. It's a little known fact that popcorn buckets are very effective blunt force trauma weapons. Now zooming out a bit, it seems like a lot of theater employees remember movie releases as like flashpoint experiences where films will leave lasting cultural impressions that collectively scarred all cinema workers because of how successful those movies were and therefore how busy the theaters were. Marvel explaining they're going to release seven films in 2021. Theater employees still recovering from Endgame and the re-release. Man, I remember the theater rush when I went to watch Endgame on opening night. Sorry about that, guys. I cannot think of a group of people with a more valid reason to want movies to tank or at least just do kind of okay-ish than theater employees. It's like, if shit does too well, they're gonna be in hell for weeks on end as people file in to see the big movie of the summer. But if every movie shits the bed all the time, then theaters go out of business and they just don't have a job. It's a god-awful balancing act to juggle. I survived Barbenheimer 2023 with a pink nuclear explosion to commemorate what it felt like to have to survive a double feature craze for those poor theater employees. I'd hate having to work a shift that lines up with those two having showings back to back. If I ran into a really annoying customer during the first movie, I I'd probably be shitting my 
myself, worrying I'd run into them again three hours later before they watched the other one. Like, what if they're still mad at me, man? Then again, maybe it'd be fun to see how their mental state deteriorates based on which they watched first. You'll either get to see their soul leave their eyes or have them perk up back to life. The Stanford prison experiment guys would have killed to see this shit. I can really only imagine the Dread Theater employees felt seeing all of these movie companies see the success of Barbenheimer and trying to recreate that double feature craze for their own films. Like, remember when they were trying to make fucking Saw Patrol happen? This subreddit must have let out a collective sigh of relief when they saw people dunking on studio execs trying to make it happen. Now, for a statement in the complete opposite direction, I was looking forward to a busy night with Birds of Prey. Got this. Listen, it ain't up to me to tell a person how to feel about the job they work that I've never experienced, but looking forward to a busy night is not a sentiment I thought I'd see expressed in this community. Then again, maybe being, like, moderately stressed is more appealing to some people than being bored out of your mind for eight hours. Whatever gets you to that medium popcorn-sized bag, my friend. One particularly tragic event in recent theater employee memory appears to be the Taylor Swift Eras Tour in theaters. People were moshing and treating those shows like Taylor was on the stage right in front of them, but it sounds like theater employees that was coming, and it could at least prepare for it to some extent. What I didn't know was that apparently they added more shows for the tour that started on the day before they were originally supposed to. Now it was a Thursday, and a bunch of theaters just didn't get any advanced warning, so they were completely underprepared for the change. Just understaffed, stuff was gonna be out of stock because they weren't aware of what was gonna happen. And that's gotta suck for, like, Taylor Swift fans, too. A lot of them bought tickets for Friday because they thought it was gonna be an opening night hype sort of deal. And suddenly, now there's more shows on Thursday that they can't swap sometime because of the no-refunds policy. It's just a stressful change for everyone involved, it seems. One thing I didn't think I'd see in this subreddit was a theater's management looking after their employees? With Star Wars opening this Thursday, we are going to be busier than many of you have experienced. Guests will be stressed due to lines, and you will be even more stressed because of the guests. I imagine if you thought this shit was gonna be a breeze, then you make the Squidward oh no face when your own management tells you this thing's gonna fucking suck, lol. We will get through it together, working as a team. You all know the job, and you are trusted to handle anything that comes your way. Wait, anything? Like, even bullets? I I'm gonna be honest, if one of those comes my way, I don't think I'm gonna handle it very well, personally. None of you will be able to take care of every issue that arises, so do not be afraid to ask for help. We are in this together. Fuck, that's the nicest thing I've ever seen said to a minimum wage employee. For me, it was always, suck it up, or you're cooking the patties wrong. Due to the demands of Star Wars, none of you need to worry about meals Thursday through Sunday, as the following will be available. And then they got an array of food for staff, and thank you all in advance for all of your hard work. May the Force be with us. Fuck, this sounds like it's bordering on a positive workplace experience. A tough and grueling one for sure, but one that takes into account the humanity of people working there? I didn't think this type of thing existed in my country. Damn. Me trying to clean a completely destroyed theater. The projector turns on and Maria M. What's up, newbie fans? This is some real insider baseball, but let me try to elucidate this a little. When you hear Maria M. come on in the projector, it means you're in the 11th hour. You're on some buzzer beater shit now. Maria M. is the harbinger of death in newbie commercials. You'll know what those are if you've ever been on fortunate enough to show up too early to a showing before movie commercials have even started playing. And for theater employees, it means that no matter how much they have left to clean, they've got to move quick because people are about to start filing in. Even if it is a jump scare for theater employees, though, at some point when you're exposed to the same horror enough, it just becomes a spit in the face. It's a less haunting and more taunting presence at that point. When Maria Menounos scares the shit out of you while cleaning theaters, and you really don't give a damn anymore. The fear that I'm not letting you see on her face when she realized that her throw was too strong, her whip was too sick, her bitch was too bad, and that she almost hit the theater screen was palpable. If they weren't anxious about their javelin throw at the time of slinging it, they probably were after the comments made sure they were aware of how close to the sun they flew. A kid at my previous theater threw a broomstick and put a hole through the screen. He got charged with a felony offense for causing $20,000 of property damage, so I'd be careful. Those are words straight from the Bible. Don't fuck up the theater screen or you may get a felony offense for causing $20,000 of property damage. Thoughts before a shift. First post ever. Smile. This shift is gonna be a breeze. We won't be short-staffed today. Maybe I'll get off early. I'm sure the customers will be respectful and have reasonable expectations. When I was working my minimum wage fast food job, and apologies for continuing to bring up, but it is relevant, I quickly learned to abandon hope and instead to live by a JFK quote. Do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger men. The universe has rarely had mercy on us before, so I should not believe it will give it to me now. Instead, I must believe 
believe in my ability to bear through it and get to the end. If I do this, and if shit is actually easier than I thought it'd be, it's a pleasant surprise because I was bracing myself for the worst. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, as fictional characters like JFK say. Walking into a closing shift and hearing the openers say that it hasn't been busy. Don't do that. Don't give me hope. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm clocking into work already in a bad mood, so don't give me a lifeline to hang on to in case it's just gonna be yanked away. All because the opening staff couldn't accurately predict the whims of the universe and the viewing habits of people that day. Listen, if it stays relaxed like you were gonna say, my mood will gradually improve. Actually, I'll probably just be stewing in silence, but if it doesn't improve, at least I didn't think God finally smiled down on me. The thin yellow line. Supporting our brave movie theater employees. Listen, I don't know why you picked yellow. It just looks like someone pissed in the dead center of the flag. Even still, this is probably the one flag that looks like this that I would consider getting as a bumper sticker on my car. It would make people from all sides of the political spectrum double take at it and hopefully laugh after reading it. Somebody posted a picture of just this box and captioned it, the worst. I can't say I know the specific thing this image is complaining about, but I can guess that this box is a pain in the ass to open. I have seen packaging sealed up like that. You gotta tear the skin off your fingertips to open those. It looks heavy duty. Let's read the comments for research purposes. My back hurts just looking at this. Punching the shit out of this during a rush is a rite of passage. Yeah, I'm gonna assume I was right on the money. That's all I got. The card I mentioned should be on screen. And remember, treat movie theater employees and service workers like human beings. Anyways, this has been quite, and I will see you guys next time.